All right, guys. Uh, yesterday, we had a Mito meltdown on 18. And Justin Thomas ends up securing his second career major in a playoff against Will Zalatoris, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Uh, DraftKings contributors Jeff Ulrich, DK Nation's uh, Colin Sherwin, they are here from PGA Tour uh, Chaser Fate. So let's, before we look ahead to this week and Charles Schwab Challenge at Colonial Country Club, guys, let's recap what went down uh, yesterday. So the tournament, as Jeff and I were just talking about off camera, felt like a snooze really until late on Sunday. JT knocked off uh, Willie Z in that three-hole playoff. What impressed you the most, uh, Jeff, about Thomas's second PGA Championship here? He trailed by seven strokes entering Sunday. Yeah, um, I, I think that's, I mean, obviously, look, just, just pointing to the fact that Justin Thomas was that far down coming in uh, on a Sunday and just managed to get it done. I mean, I, I think the thing that, that impresses me about Justin Thomas is just how complete a player he's become. Yeah. I mean, you saw it there in the playoff. The playoff was like a perfect epitome of what Justin Thomas can do. He can do it all. Okay, he drives his ball in the rough. Well, he chips out and he hits a wedge to five feet. Oh, we got a drivable par four. I'll take my three wood and put it on the green. Oh, I need a par. I'll, I'll lace my drive down the water and then I'll hit my approach. So it's basically impossible for me to three putt. Like he's just a complete player. It's so nice to watch. I mean, it's it's just it, it's it's really like he's he's just at the top of his game. So Justin Thomas obviously grinding out there as well. He's got that mentality that. You know, he's, he's just that good, and eventually it'll happen for him, and it did happen for him last Sunday. Yeah, Colin, how was Thomas able to seize the moment here? Um, I, I think he's just, like like Jeff said, best player on the tour right now. I mean, that's not – I mean, with Scotty Sheffler not playing really well, um, the balance in his game is, is extreme. Uh, I think this is the point where we go ahead and go to the production and have them play back that I picked Justin Thomas to win this tournament. There's a reason I picked Justin Thomas to win this tournament. Um, he has done it in majors before. He's been close. But the balance in his game, when we knew he'd react well under pressure, it showed in the playoff. That, that shot on 17 into the green was just – yeah, unbelievable. I mean, that was some epic golf. So um, congratulations to him. I, there is such a thing as a major hangover. I'm going to actually fade him this week at the okay. Colonial um, because I think, as we saw with Scotty Scheffler, sometimes you win one of these things and it's just so emotionally exhausting to try and get back up on the horse can be really, really challenging. So, um, yeah, but I think Justin Thomas, he, and it's not just going to be at the PGA. He's going to be in contention this year at the U.S. Open because he's got the game to keep the ball in the fairway. And, I, you know, he's long enough where he can compete at St. Andrews as well. I mean, Jeff, someone else is in the field this week. I mean, Pereira is in the field. That swing on 18, he steps up to the 18 tee box. Like I was texting you or read about it. He has a one-shot lead, so you can bogey and you'll end up in a three-man playoff. But yeah. what the hell happened there? Like, I can't imagine the nerves and the way what was ripping through his mind at that time. So, I mean, obviously he's nervous. He even admitted after, like, he thought he had won the tournament, obviously – um, just, but you know, he, he thought he was going to win anyways, but the thing, the thing about this, and this is what impresses me about this group of players, man. Like you can throw Cam Young in there as well. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously Zal Torres, but like there, there, yeah, yes, he was nervous. And yes, the, the swing was just a little off kilter, but there's no fear from him. I mean, this, this is a player won three times on the corn Ferry tour. Um, and, and I know the first time he won, he won with like an Eagle on the final hole. I mean, there's no fear from this guy. And yeah, maybe it caught, you could say it cost him down the stretch, but I don't think he gets there without playing with that mentality either. So, um, yeah, it, it was tough to watch. But this is a player who, you know, I, I talked about two weeks ago at the Byron Nelson. He was my main pick, and it's for a reason. You, you look at the elite stats, like par four scoring, efficiency for on longer par fours, uh, just a, a proximity stats from, from like mid to long irons. This guy ranks out really well in all of them. He, and, and he's an aggressive player, and aggressiveness does tend to pay off eventually on the PGA. Obviously, it hurt him on that one hole. It's kind of a bad break as well, just the way the ball bounced. But yeah, um, I, I don't really think it was a case of like him doing something stupid. It was just the, the swing was tiny bit off kilter. He was trying to do what he did the whole tournament. It just didn't work out. Well, he was in the uh, winning Millie Maker lineup too for the PGA Championship, Jeff. We'll punch that up here. And I want to ask you what your biggest yeah. takeaway is uh, from this lineup. So Thomas, Willie Z, Neiman, Fleetwood, Young, Prairie, dude. I mean, this is this is hella good, and Lois' own player is like around nine percent there. Fleetwood. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, it it just speaks to the fact that we need you need to basically trust, you know, what what the TD Green stats are, are kind of telling us. I mean, you know, it, guys like Young, uh, Mito, and 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 obviously Zal Torres. I mean, 
you know, you could say, well, they don't have a ton of major championship pedigree. And, and I think that, you know, maybe it hurts them a little bit more in certain other championships like the Opens. But like for the PGA, where the setup is, it's a little bit harder, but it's also longer. Uh, I think it just enhances what these guys are already doing. And there's just not as much fear coming out from the younger players of playing in these big events. So, you know, tr tr trusting guys like Mito, who, who again was like really good tee to green at the Byron Nelson. That's kind of what sticks out to me the most. Just these these three young players who were just uh, you know mashing the ball quite frankly week to week, and all three of them ended up in the winning lineup for uh, what was a really tough setup. Yeah, Brian Rizzo winning with 502 points, just one of three lineups that actually hit the 500 point mark. Uh, Colin Pereira was only 6,700 bucks too. What a home run hit! Yeah, um, I I had the sweat of a lifetime. I'm not gonna lie. I had you know 130 to one. Oh um, wow! Small, yeah, and um, for I, I had him put up five in top 20 as well, and I, I wasn't worried there. But I had JT on the one side, and then I had Mito on the other, and so um, yeah, sweat of a lifetime. I, I was nauseous watching it happen. Quite frankly, um, it was. I again, I agree. But if if you're gonna say he choked anywhere, I don't think he choked off the tee because that was just sort of a bad break. But his his drop two hit three. Yeah, that approach going over the green. That's a ball you got to stick on the green. You what? know, you got to make five there. You got to find a way to scramble and make five. Well, yeah, and I, I it, think driver was a was a rough choice, right? Yeah, like, driver's a rough choice there too. You know that that got a little Mickelson. Um, it wasn't quite a Vandeveld. You know what I mean? It was, but still not good. Probably not the best decision. But again, this kid's this kid's a real talent. Yeah. Um, you can see it. Complete game. Very calm all week. You know, had a really bad run there on Saturday as well. Between, I think it was 8, 9, and 10. He went bogey, bogey, bogey. And all three were just sort of like a foot off. And then he spins it back and he's 50 feet off the green and things. Like, and he just rolled through it and ended up making some birdies down the stretch as well. So I really like his game. I really like where he's at. Um, somebody gave me a heads up to him earlier in the week. And that's how I ended up on him. I didn't really know much about the kid. But it looks like he, he had actually won a tournament as an amateur at Southern Hills as well. So, um, yeah, I... It was brutal to watch, but mm -hmm. I think he's really got a future. He's really got talent. On the other side of that, I think for Zalatoris, um, this is just another thing where you go, man, can this kid really get it done? Because you could see the putts were left short. They were off. He could not finish. And you could see you could see his heart beating out of his chest. I don't know if he's ready to win yet, but a kid like Pereira, I would continue to ride. Yeah. I mean, Willie Z, 25, only a matter of time before he gets into the winner's circle. Guys, he plays his best in these major championships. Runner up at the 2021 Masters, tie for six la this year at Augusta, tie for six at the 2020 U.S. Open, tie for eight last year's PGA, and now yesterday's runner up finish. Jeff, Chaser Fate is number of plus 2,000 this week. I mean, the Texan at the final Texas stop of the season. Yeah, no thanks. Um, <laughs> look, I mean, like, it's not even, it's not a, it's not an indignation against Will Zalatoris. He's, he's absolutely fantastic. The tougher the golf course, the better. He can hit those long irons like we saw in the playoff. You know, six irons from like 200 yards out, smashes it on the green. But you don't need to do that at Colonial. It's, it's basically like a short to mid iron fest. And then you've just got to sink a bunch of putts. It's not really Will Zalatoris' game the last time I checked. So, um, you know, for me, it's when you're betting at him at this number, it's not great. You were getting out 50 to 1 last week. That was great. That was good. That was smart because, again, you're saying, well, the, the bookmakers are saying that Zalatoris can't win in, in, a, in a major championship when actually it, he actually plays better and he's probably got a better chance when, when the courses are tougher. So now that everything's shifted. The course is a little bit easier. It's not super easy, but it's not really set up where, again, like Zalator is going to be taking advantage of the best parts of his game. And you've got to get red hot with the putter here because everyone's like, they, it's a very low three putt percentage, which you think would help Zalator, but it's going to help the field as well. So, um, you know, a plus 2,000, really, this number, it's just way too short. I can list off five names here behind him at like plus 3,500. I'd rather bet. All right, Colin, you said you were going to fade JT, a little hangover there from the PGA Championship. What about the dude who lost to him in the playoff? Yeah, I'm fading him too. Um, you know, I, again, he's close. The, the, there's two comparisons I want to make here. This is the best ball striker on the tour. This kid can absolutely murder it when he's in a fairway. Um, yeah, I super really impressed, but he's got that Tom Watson in his game where, like, clearly the best ball striker, but just can't make a putt when he needs it. Um, and I just feel like that's going to be something that hang, hangs over him for a while. Remember, these are all things we were saying about Phil Mickelson at 25. Can't win the big one. Can't quite close it out. Can't do this thing. He's going to get better. He's going to be fine. 
but this is a process. His process is just taking longer than some other players on tour. Um, so he's going to be okay, but I no, not this week, not to win. Um, you know, this, this is going to be emotionally damaging for him. I think he's going to win. I, he might even win this year, but you, you're not asking a guy to come off the emotional roller coaster that was Sunday and then come back and play his best golf four days later. Yeah. Just not happening. I mean, Ulrich, this is a, this is a pretty damn good field for, you know, the week after a, a major here and it includes Jason Kokrak who is uh, last year's winner. So his odds currently in the DK Sportsbook, looking at him at plus 3,500. You want to chase or fade those? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll fade Kokrak as well. I mean, <laughs> oh my God. you guys are fading player. everybody. I've, I've faded for the last, look, I've, I've faded Kokrak for the last year and a half, hasn't worked out, but he's just been, I mean, the, the, the putting stroke that Jason Kokrak has found, it, it's been really impressive, but at the same time, it's just not something I necessarily want to chase. And and look, the, one of the main reasons is you mentioned it, it's the depth of field. Like I, I look at this board, and I see Abraham answer down there at plus 4,000. I'd just rather bet him, a player who hits every fairway, has really good putting stats on, on bent grass greens as well. He's, he fin- he's finished T14 at this event the last two seasons. I just think answer is a slightly better bet, and you're getting a better number as well. Also really like the way answer played last week, had his best ball striking week of the season. So for me, like you look down, and there's just a little – I mean, you can even go to Mito or Gary Woodland at plus 5,000. I just think that it's just better plays than, than going back to Jason Kokrak here. Again, a player who, you know, you can, you can, you can make the case that, like, he, he's had his stretch. He's had his due. And, and maybe it's just time for just, like, a little bit of regression for the balls not to drop for him on Sunday. So, for me, I, I think the number just isn't big enough for me to, to, to like Kokrak. If he was back down there and, like, switch places with Woodland, I'd probably consider him. Okay. Colin, you feel the same? I do. Uh, Kokrak has finished uh, first and third in this event. Both times he was, uh, in, in the last two years, both times he was minus 14. Um, but again, th- he's not playing his best golf right now. You know, I'll, he did win the HP Open this year, but but since then, and that was in November, a lot of like T15 to T35 range, just not a lot of wins, missed a cut um, with T60 last week at the PGA. Um, I think he's probably... A bit of a fade but i would like him in like a top 20 situation this is a course he knows well he's going to feel comfortable he'll putt well so um right now at plus 10 i believe he's plus 330 to finish top 10 this week that's something i would like a little bit more than for him to straight up win um you know i think he can put a number on the board whatever he is at top 20 i think would be interesting as well um but yeah this is this doesn't seem like a great spot for for him to to come back and win this week and again like these guys i'm telling you especially in courses like this where yeah these you know, these guys are just so good now. You just have to be, you got to get a little lucky. You got to have some breaks as well. Um, and I just don't think Cockrack's playing right now well enough to win this thing again. All right, Colin. So Thomas, top of the board. You know you're fading him. There's Scheffler at plus 1,000. And then let's go to another Texan, Jordan Speed, plus 1,200. You want to chase or fade him this week at that number? You know, it, this is tough. So he won in New Orleans. He finished second at the Byron Nelson. Everything seemed to be coming together for him. And then he did the speed thing, which is he put up big numbers on certain holes and he T34 this week. Um, it, this is less likely that he's going to blow up on a, on a course that he knows really well and has performed well. And since 2016, this is how he's finished in this event. 7th, 14th, 2nd, 1st, 2nd, 32nd, 8th, 10th, and 2nd. That seems like a guy you want to bet at plus money at top 140 or for top 10. So plus 140 at top 10 this week. I really like that for speed. I actually like that a little bit more than him finishing to win. But I do think he plays well this week. I think he puts a number on the board. Um, he still knows there's two majors left this year. And even though the one that could complete, complete his career Grand Slam is gone, um, he thinks about major trophies. So, of course, he knows well. Backyard, clearly his track record here, and you're getting plus money. I'll take him plus at top 10 for plus 140. Jeff, he struggled at Southern Hills, but had some tremendous driving and, and decent ball striking. Maybe he got too hot too soon. Yeah, I mean, it, it, look, these do, guys do, they, they go tend to go through peaks and valleys, even when they're playing well, right? Like, you can't play your your absolute pinnacle of golf every week. Spieth, obviously, first and second. He's already got a win on the season. I, I think that at this number, if, if I'm looking to one of the favorites this week, I'm, I'm probably going to lean Colin Morikawa over over any of them. Um, you know, you, Morikawa, he started the season a little bit slow. He had that, well, he didn't really start slow. He just had that little rough stretch where he missed the cut at the players and, and kind of, the Valspar, but he's bounced back pretty nicely. Like it, the results haven't been off the charts or anything, but clearly gaining strokes off the tee. Um, the approaches are, are, are starting to get there He gained seven strokes on approach at the heritage, another really tightly intertwined classic course. And Morikawa has, has shown us that like 
he likes these setups. I mean, he lost in a playoff here um, against Daniel Berger in 2020. Um, was was top 10 here last season as well. Uh, he's really just got to find the, the putting stroke this week. And and again, you know, as we saw with John Rahm in Mexico, like eventually with these top players, they'll figure it out. And we know Morikawa can figure out the greens. Like he, he, he he's not the most consistent putter, but he will spike for those big weeks. I think if you're looking at the top of the board, I, you, you can't love the number. You really wish that, you know, you, you could get him at like plus 1800 or something. But when you look at this field, it's really the top four players and then kind of everyone else, it feels like. And Morikawa is, is the guy I feel the most confident about. We mentioned the hangover with Thomas. Scheffler probably just, you know, still a little bit high off the Masters win. I'll take Morikawa over Spieth this week. I, I think that's the way to play it.